This is the House of Hockey podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. Hockey is more than a game, it's a lifestyle. It's you, the diehard supportive fans, your favorite players who are on the team you cheer for and the organization who supports them. The companies that make your gear, bags, and beer league sweaters, the hockey moms and hockey dads, and everything else that makes this House of Hockey your home. Come on in, I'm Breezy. And I'm Ray Ray. And And this this is is our house. house. The tournament is finally here. The brackets have been set and the teams are ready to hit the court. And DraftKings, the leader in one day fantasy, is celebrating with their largest free college basketball survivor pool ever. How large? $1 $1 million in total prizes up for grabs. And if that's not enough, check this out. When you enter the free DraftKings $1 million survivor pool, you could get a shot at winning $10,000 for every upset through the first two rounds of the tournament. It's easy to play. Just pick one team per day. If they win, you survive and advance to the next round. Last person standing is the winner. Remember, you can only pick a team once for the entire tournament, so choose wisely. DraftKings is a safe and secure app. You can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. Get in on all of this week's action. Download the DraftKings app now and enter code THPN. That's THPN for the Hockey Podcast Network during sign up and enter the free $1 million survivor pool. And again, that is code THPN to enter into DraftKings free $1 million survivor pool. Eligibility restrictions and terms and conditions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. I forgot it was daylight savings time. So then like we lost an hour and I woke up and I'm sitting here. I'm like, but the stove says seven, but right. the phone says eight. And I was like, that means my call technically is at 10. I know. But Sorry. it's really 11. And I was like, I got to put my pork butt on. I was like, oh, shoot. What's happening? And you're recording right now. So this is. <laughs> this is staying in. This is oh, staying in. Welcome, uh, everybody, to the House of Hockey podcast episode 53. 53. 53. I'm Ray Ray. And I'm Breezy. <laughs> yeah. And it was freaking time change. Daylight savings time. Nobody likes yeah. it. I'm just so confused. It's like, do we really need to have daylight savings? I just, Arizona doesn't have it. We don't need to have it. It was invented, I believe, for the farmers. Yeah. Um, to have more daylight hours to work longer. And then also something with um, it in the early mornings back when kids, you know, used to go to school and yeah. in person, it's really, really mm-hmm. dark out in one of the times, either spring or fall. And so it's really dark in the morning for them and unsafe. So that's the other argument people have for like not for for doing daylight saving time because... Mm whatever I, it's just yeah. it's just a big pain in the ass that's what it is it really is and i'm just irritated yeah <laughs> well, yeah you lost an hour of sleep it sucks yeah yeah you know it's fine we'll survive anyway in two days we're gonna be like eh we love having the sun out until nine o'clock at night <laughs> see i don't i'm like a. I like the dark i like the nighttime i <laughs> do too weird? i like the night but I am looking forward to being able to like hang out in my backyard when it don't need like a blanket on and like a heater. So sure. us California people get very cold in 60 degree weather. So it's <laughs> true. True. Um, yeah. This week, we our guest is Dwayne Steinel. He is one of the two hosts on Two Goalies, One Mike podcast. He is a Buffalo Sabres fan. You may know him from his now infamous radio rant um, in local radio news. Uh, A couple of other famous podcasts picked up his rant where he's basically screaming his lungs out about how upset he is uh, at the Buffalo Sabres ownership. And you'll hear that clip uh, during the interview in case you don't know what we're talking about. But uh, it's hard out there for Sabres fans. It is. 
It really is. And, you know, I never really, like, paid attention to Sabres fans and or the Sabres in general, which uh, I guess kind of aids into the reason why maybe they're all so upset. Yeah. Um, and we hear Dwayne tells us all about the other stuff. But I do recall I accidentally – my phone auto-corrected Sabres and, like, it spelled it incorrectly – uh-huh. But, like, not incorrectly when I did a post on Hunks of Hockey, like, this was, like, four years ago. And I had so much hate. They're like, you can't even spell her name right. And I was like, it was autocorrect. <laughs> Just, like, calm down. But I thought about that during this interview. And I'm like, I'm not even going to mention this to Dwayne because I don't, he's going to blow up on me probably for that, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if you don't know anything about the Sabres. <laughs> Uh, or the fans or the city of Buffalo, you will now and you will yes. you will have a good understanding of what it's like to be a fan and to support the team and what's going on with the ownership. And then also to just pour some more hot water on the on the, on the interview, their star Jack Eichel <laughs> is now out for the unforeseeable future with an upper body injury. So there, you know, just send some love to Sabres fans. If if you have a Sabres fan in your life, send them a message of care <laughs> because they really need it, guys. Like they need it more than the yeah. Minnesota Wild fans. Like, yeah. But they, I do have to admit, I have a lot of respect for Sabres fans. They yeah. they go through a lot. They're diehard fans. It's a hockey town. Uh, you gotta love them. You gotta feel for them. Um, I just feel bad. I really do. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. In some other injury news, that's that's no longer an injury. Kirby Doc of the Chicago Blackhawks ha- finally got to uh, practice with the team. He was out because in the World Junior, he broke his um, broke his hand wrist, or his yeah. wrist, and yeah. he's finally getting back out there. So that was exciting to see. And then. Kaner had his 1,000th game, and he did. Did you see the thing he did? Did you see the meditation video he made? No. I oh my didn't. god. Okay. So I don't know who came up with this. I think it was somebody with the Blackhawks, but then he played 1,000 games, and for some reason they decided to have Kane count mm-hmm. from one to a thousand in a meditation with meditative music behind it. I'll play a clip here. I'm Patrick Kane. And tonight, I'm going to help you fall asleep. And here we go. The moon is out. It's glow time. One. Two. Oh my gosh. And he literally sat and counted on a recording like 999, 1000. And he literally recorded this. You could go listen to it. If you have trouble sleeping, it's like a 58 minute long meditation. So would you fall asleep to at nighttime? I do now. Yep. And it works (laughs) magically. I don't get to a thousand. I can tell you that. (laughs) Wow. That's funny. But yeah, he got his 1,000th game. They didn't do very well that game, but uh, that's an incredible, incredible feat. Congrats to Kaner. Good news that Doc is is um, working out again on, on, on the ice. And, yeah. you know, the Hawks aren't doing too bad. No, they're not. They're doing way better than the Preds. My boy Roman Yossi is currently injured as well. <sighs> He's on injured reserve. My fantasy league, uh, my team's not oh, doing no. so hot because I have uh, like five people that are injured and out, but it's okay. I'll come back. I'll come back strong. Um, you said you had something to tell right me. I have something to tell you. Yeah, you I do have, have something to tell you. <clears throat> I decided that maybe I should uh, face my fear of failure. Oh, and I thought I'm you were going to say sharks or something. Sharks? <laughs> yeah, aren't you afraid of sharks oh, no. in the ocean? 
I am afraid of that, but... Oh, all right. A, a different fear. <laughs> Your fear of failure. <laughs> My fear of failure. And I uh, created a website for Breezy's Barbecue Pit. I'm going <gasps> to open up shop here uh, out of the backyard. Uh, I have it almost fully functional. I just need to take some photos. And I have a menu set just working on some pricing. So I will be opening up my menu here shortly and you can order from my website but it's local pickup so if you're not uh here then well for now it's local pickup for now yeah uh-huh yay i'm so excited everybody Thanks. in the greater los angeles area is gonna get a taste of your incredible i've only had your nuts but <laughs> I can only imagine, and from what I've seen and what everybody says about your cooking, it's phenomenal, and your barbecuing is incredible. Just from from the nuts I had, I know you've got skills, and I'm so excited Thanks. for you. This is so Thank exciting. You. Thank you. I'll have to send you the website so you can peep it. But Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. If I was local, I would be ordering from you. I know well, we're you. friends, but I would order from you as a to show support, right? Like, well, not be like, Breezy, can I get some free uh, chicken nuggets and like some free <laughs> chicken wings? Like, no. Chicken nuggets? Chicken nuggets? I don't know why. You don't make chicken nuggets, but. I can if you want me to. I don't. Sure. <laughs> no, I don't want chicken nuggets. I want whatever you whatever you cook. You cook all the things. So. There we go. Well, that's yeah. my exciting news. That's, that's all I got. Very exciting. I'm going to make this an unpopular hockey opinion. <laughs> okay. Because I don't understand. Justin Bieber allegedly wrote a new song called Hold On, which is about the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I listened to this song and I watched the music video. The video is sick, you have to admit. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> but like, I don't, I, I don't, I'm missing the connection to how that has anything to do with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like, Justin Bieber, hold on, he's going to come save the fucking Leafs team and play? Like, what does he think? He has this kind of power? I, I, what am I missing? Like, I, think it's it's, just I thought it was like a love he, song. Well, he grew up being a Leafs fan he's from you know Toronto love hit Toronto area uh I think it's about maybe friendship from okay. what I was getting out of it he's obviously a huge Leafs fan he has played with Austin and Mitch multiple times just for fun pickup games yeah he's like BFFs with with Austin Matthews and I think it was just kind of his tribute that the Leafs have done so much for him uh, okay. And have kept him holding on and going through everything that he's been going through. And so I think it was maybe a tribute back to the Leafs. It's kind of his thing. The video footage that he put together for the video, I yeah. thought was awesome. But I'm a huge Bieber fan and I know. Uh, loved it. But I think it's more of um, like a, I guess you can say a love song. Maybe it's the love for the Leafs, but also a friendship song. Take it as you want. Okay, I don't well even know. But Let yeah. me read the chorus to you all in case you haven't listened to the song. <laughs> Midnight till morning, call if you need somebody. I will be there for you. I will be there for you. Midnight till morning, call if you need somebody. I will be there for you. So is this like written from the perspective of the Leafs? Like the Leafs are saying, like if, if you were the Toronto Maple Leafs, you would be telling your fans and listeners you know, hold on, I will be there for you, call if you need somebody. Is that it? Is it like the reverse? I don't know. Because, I mean, you obviously, if I need someone and I want to call like Mitch Marner, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to, to do that. <laughs> well, right. That That's what I mean. Like, this is the other part. I need you to hold on. Heaven is a place not too far away. We all know I should be the one to say we all make mistakes. Take my hand and hold on. I mean, the Leafs making mm -hmm. mistakes, that applies. Yes. Yes. But heaven? Like, these, heaven is like... Well, he's very religious, so maybe he's okay. saying <clears throat> heaven's not too far away. Like, if you keep holding on, keep grinding, keep pushing, maybe this is the year that the Leafs want right. to go. 
Okay. That could be heaven. I, I'm, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> You're not feeling it. Not feeling it. Like, well, I, I don't, I don't to, want uh, somebody to write a song about the Blackhawks. No, well, we're good. I'll we don't need to a song. I'll listen to the Leafs tonight to go to bed and you can listen to Kaner count to a thousand. How about that? Sounds good. <laughs> so we are going to pass this on over to Dwayne Steinel. You may know him from the hashtag we are all Dwayne. And basically, I mean, he said it better himself on Twitter. His Twitter bio says, I yelled into my phone once at a guy and a bunch of stuff happened. And that is exactly what happened. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Dwayne. Tell everybody who you are. All right. Um, hey, everybody. I am. Uh, thanks for having me on the uh, House of Hockey. Uh, I'm Dwayne Steinel from Buffalo, New York. I am literally just a fan. Uh, just a uh, some like to refer to me as the, the super fan of Buffalo. I, I don't like to put myself on that pedestal. But I am uh, one of the two hosts of Two Goalies, One Mike. Uh, co-host of Crossing Swords podcast and a contributor to Trainwreck Sports here in Buffalo. And, uh, you know, I'm just an avid, passionate, not just Sabres fan, but a hockey fan. I love everything everything having to do with hockey and uh, enjoy it very much. And, you know, again, thanks for having me. And you're uh, a goalie. Yes, a I goalie, am. goalie, are a goalie. We're, yeah. we're a goalie, a men, washed up men's league goalie now. Um, our season actually starts back up again this weekend. Uh, first time. I'll actually be third time. I'll be on the ice. since the start of COVID wow. uh, first time I've actually been played in a game in over a year, which is wild. Uh, very, really wild. I, uh, I am not in shape anymore at all. The world, <laughs> gave, the world gave me a reason to not feel bad about going to the gym. And uh, I took every advantage and uh, just, how's, but, how's yeah. your butterfly going to be? Uh, my butterfly will be fine. This is getting back up. <laughs> <laughs> the getting back up part is going to be the difficult part. Uh, the flexibility going down, is still there. Yeah, going down to the butterfly will be fine. It's just that getting back up part over and over again. That's going to be that's going to be the issue for sure. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so tell us, um, your co-host isn't joining us because obviously we should mention since you said two goalies, one Mike. Um, you are one of the two. Um, yeah. He's runs a goalie uh, coach, uh, goalie camp. I'm sorry, right? Yeah, runs a goalie camp. It's called Big Game Goaltending here in Buffalo. Yeah. So um, he's not here. Um, his loss, but yeah. <laughs> just wanted to clarify that so people aren't like, "There's two of them, but you there's only one person." Like, what is that about? So uh, we've cleared that up now, and let's move on. So tell everybody about. The hashtag we are all Dwayne in case they missed the big news headline story that you were a part of last year. Uh, tell everybody the story um, about your fandom. Um, the uh, accidental fandom, I guess, that I, <laughs> or notoriety I gained. It wasn't intentional at all. Um, you know, it's just, you know, part of being a Sabres fan the last decade, you know, you deal with a lot of mediocrity, you're the butt of a lot of jokes. And, um, in the first year under coach Ralph Kruger, we were experiencing some success, a lot of highs, but more, 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 more lows than highs. And we were coming out of an all-star break where we were playing a lot of teams below us in the standings and, uh, good opportunity to climb the standings to get into a playoff position. And they laid an absolute egg against the Ottawa Senators. I think it was a day or two later, I was uh, getting ready to go to the gym. I was sitting in the parking lot and I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, a free, I, w- I was a freaking caller into that radio station. And, um, you know, so some of the producers there knew me. Um, I actually played some men's league hockey with them too. And I'm sitting there on hold and I'm just looking through like the negative negativity of Sabres Twitter. That's what it's called here. It's called Sabres Twitter. And it's, um, it, it, it's a very, very dark negative place. Just in that moment, when you lead in, leading into them, putting me on, putting me on the air, it kind of changed. And when you listen to the call, Dwayne is going to lead us off this segment. Hi Dwayne. Thanks for calling. You're on the air. Hey, thanks Bulldog. Thanks guys. Uh, like, I need an owner who's going to answer the fans when they misspell names on jerseys and have Chinese knockoffs on alumni. Like, what is going on? Like, what are we doing? Like, I don't understand it, man. Like, Bulldog, you've lived through this. You've seen it. Like, 
Have you ever been, like, have they ever sucked a passion out of you like they have me? I've dedicated my life to hockey because of this team. Like, I can't do it anymore, man. Like, like I'm seriously, for the first time, considering just not being a season ticket holder this year. Like, we're, like I, I, even when the team was terrible, Ted Black would come on the station and talk to fans and address concerns. I don't need the, the, the I don't need a damn camera in front of Terry Pagula every single day. But address our concerns. Be there when, when, when you screw up. Answer for the mistakes. Be accountable. You know, this, like Pat LaFontaine had being forced out of the out of the organization. You know, five years ago, however long it was. Like I don't need an explanation, but it's just been mediocrity. It's it's almost worse than the Bills drought. Be, be, like like, and you know what? As, as I don't know what people's opinions of the man were, you know, with Russ Brandon. But if Russ Brandon was running the team still, I highly doubt he would have allowed Chinese knockoff jerseys to be worn by Danny Garrett at Turkey Drive. I would have got on the ice, the goat head, missing deadlines. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, what is it? And <laughs> I just started losing it. I just, I, you know, it went from low to high, low to high, and higher than higher. You know, just going off on ownership, an ownership group that I've defended tooth and nail for a long time. And just, I really felt they've been taking the fan base for granted, knowing that we're so loyal, um, that we're always going to come back no matter what, we're going to be here, that they can take their sweet old time with getting this figured out, that, you know, they don't have to do anything for the fan base with, with the off-ice product. When my opinion is, if you know the team is going to stink, you know, if you know you're not going to be competitive for a year or two, at least do your best to make the fans feel like they matter. And they stopped doing that. And then years passed before the Pagulas, it wasn't always like that. You know, you, you, you know, you know, you would feel appreciated. They would used to do things called like the Sabres carnival, where if you're kids, you can go to the arena and they, they shut you know, you could like you used to have players in dunk takes and you can race, ra- race the players with RC cars and stuff like that. It was a cool experience and really cool to help you develop a personal relationship, not just the players, but the team. And that's what I, that's the hockey team and the environment, the culture I grew up with. And I always appreciated that because it helped me develop a lot of relationships growing up because that's how I actually ended up getting into hockey competitively was for my love of the Sabres. So that translated into me playing competitive hockey and me developing relationships because of that. So I owed a lot to Sabres hockey growing up and just to see what it was then to what it became just really makes me angry because to me, it's just more than wins and losses. It's, it, it's about the culture that's developed and the relationships you develop because of it. And it just, it, the, the owners just don't seem to care. They just didn't seem to, you know, realize what that meant to this fan base. And it really pissed me off. And it just, it finally pushed me to a point where I'm like, I'm done defending them. Like I, I can't defend them anymore. They don't give me reason to defend anymore. You can point to the things they've done in downtown Buffalo, all the re- like, like the, they have done a ton for the city, but that doesn't take away from your responsibility to the fans from the team that you, you originally promised the day you bought the team that the sole purpose is organization to win a Stanley cup done little renovations to the, to, to the, to the arena. I'm still sitting, you're still sitting in the same seats at the arena, you know, when the arena was first built it, funny story. Like I would say six or seven years ago, me and my cut, me and my, one other cousins we were splitting a thing of nachos and the tray cracked and we had double cheese and it went all over the guy in front of us. It was felt so bad. Luckily he was wearing like a leather jacket. So a lot of it wiped right off, but a lot of the cheese spilt on the side of the seat underneath the armrest. That cheese is still there to this day. No, no, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. I I will, I will gladly, if you ever come to Buffalo, take you to show you It's <laughs> right there, <laughs> right up. You know, if you lick it, you're probably getting cancer. That's right. all. That's how gross it is. Um, it's disgusting. And just, it's just an example, man. It's just like you have, you've, it's one of many, I think. Right. Yeah, it's just so many, so many discrepancies with just the way the fans are treated, just a little effort, you know, put in, you know, and put, like I said, it's just little things. And the, the real big tipping point too was the one night Sabres fans that year, the 50th anniversary we were waiting for was 90s night. Now that 90s night is exemplified by the goat head jersey, uh, the jersey that, you know, is on the front of that hashtag jersey, that, that logo, uh, the old black and red 
you know, from the nineties back when, during my favorite era of hockey. And they had to meet a deadline with Adidas to be allowed to use that Jersey during the season. Now, Vancouver, who also came into the league the same year as Buffalo did, they hit it out of the park. They met their deadlines. They wore the old black and black, yellow and uh, red skate Jersey multiple times. It looked so nice. Sabres, however, somehow forgot about this deadline. And which is amazing to me how you, the one thing fans, that's the one thing we were asking for all year on that night. Don't screw it up. Give us that Jersey. That, 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 that was what we wanted. <laughs> Instead of giving us that Jersey, they not, they, they trotted them out in these knockoff jerseys that they had made. And the logos were crooked. Like the collar was wrong. The, some of the striping was wrong. The tube was wrong. It was a disgrace. And if you look it up on Google, you Google image Sabres 90s night. And I think one of the pictures is Alexi Zhitnik, uh, former Sabres defenseman. And it's him front and center. And the logo is completely crooked. And it's just oh. like, how do you, how do you screw that up? You guys are billionaires. Like it, it just, it, it, it also goes back to the fact that they really put the Sabres into the back seat since they bought the Buffalo Bills. And it's even more evident this year. I almost wonder though, if there's like another team that's maybe taking the spotlight, kind of like what the Bills have been doing, I guess this past, well, the past two years, I think that they were performing pretty well. But once like another team in that city starts to do well, it almost feels like your team, like me, I'm a Kings fan, takes a back seat kind of like what you're talking about. And to also make your point, like I've noticed that a lot of teams now don't make their players accessible. They make them basically impossible to be in touch with. I remember when I was, you know, gosh, this is probably 10, 12 years ago. They had, you know, they had a bunch of tip of Kings. You can go and do all these different cool, like meet the players. You can go play with the players in a little bit. But now to go to a tip king, you have to spend 500 bucks to get in. And then you have to spend an extra 300 yeah. bucks to get fake money to go get one autograph. And it's like, why? Like no one wants to be a fan of a team that doesn't care about their fans. And that's not just the Kings. I mean, I feel like there's so many other teams that are exactly the same, where I think that they just are only focused on their team if they're winning or losing and not getting any fans involved. It sucks. Um, like I said, I, I have pictures, so many Kodak pictures my dad's taken of me at those Sabres carnivals. <laughs> and it doesn't take a lot of effort. You could literally empty, you could literally fill that arena, say, hey, if you're a season ticket holder, it costs you five bucks. If you're if you're not a season ticket holder, it costs you 10 bucks. Bring your kids, you know, get an autograph, you know, dunk Jack Eichel in a dunk take, whatever, you know, and kids like, like those would, get, would provide lasting memories and those memories in, in, in in the same token will last and help build that relationship and build that love for that team and that sport even past that date. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's what it did for me. What would you say makes Sabres fans so loyal? Like what is it, or what is it rather about Buffalo um, and people who are live there or are from there that make them so loyal to the team? I I mean, aside from like all the arguments you just made about how, (laughs) It's cold. We're frustrated. Here. It's cold. Well, it's cold <laughs> here. Um, we're a hockey town. We play a lot of hockey. A lot of a lot of good hockey comes out of this area. Um, but with that being said, dating back to those teams in the '80s and '90s, we were a hardworking blue collar city, and you know we you know we take pride in that, and we were used to seeing hockey teams that worked hard for us. And that was the biggest thing too, was back then was even if the team wasn't playing well or wasn't good you knew when you went to a game or you turned the TV on to watch it, that they were going to play their asses off for you. And they, you know, we, we, we had the moniker back then, the hardest working team in hockey. And, you know, they took pride in that. So what would you say your podcast is like for our listeners that are listening right now? What can they expect once they uh, tune into you? We're off the cuff. No, we're not dark. (laughs) We try and keep everything we talk about everything hockey, not just the Sabres, because obviously if we talked about the Sabres, it would literally just be nothing but negative. Um, at least recently. And we talk about everything hockey. Uh, we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, we're very off the cuff. Describe Sabres fans then when they aren't like dark, like what's it like in the oh, arena? Like when you can go to games, like what's the, the ex- shake. shakes? The whole, bo- the whole arena can shake. Literally the, the walls in that arena can shake like, you know, it, it, but it's just the key point is 
you have to be have a team on the ice that knows that what you as a team mean to them. And if they know that and they play hard for you as fans, um, again, like again, again, you'll have our undying support because that's what we want at the end. Like it's not, again, it is about winning and losing, but at the end of the day, also it's about knowing that you're going to come out there and bust your ass for us every single night. What did getting Jack Eichel do for the team and for the morale and for the fans? Oh, it was, it was unbelievable. I mean, Lof, I mean, I mean, not Lof, Eichel is the best forward that this team has had since Pat LaFontaine. You know, we lost LaFontaine in 97, 96, 96, 97 season or near the end of that season. Um, when we traded him to the Rangers and there has not been a four that's come close. And we've had guys like Breer and jury on this team. Uh, Jack Eichel is such a dynamic, explosive elite talent that that's the only guy I have that you could honestly compare him to. It, it, it's, it, it's not even close to anybody else. And he, he could take over a game on his own. This season has been different because anybody who's knows what they're watching can tell that he's been playing hurt since training camp. Um, you know, especially when you watch him on the power play, when he lines up in his spot, he, sl- he lines up in a similar spot to Ovechkin on the power play. And, uh, you know, his zip on his shot isn't as powerful. He just, it's, it's not, you know, it's not Jack out there. He, he's not playing to his fullest capability. And I don't, I'm tired of yelling. <laughs> I understand. I'm not going to yell on your show either. So no, don't good. Down. It's all good. Do you have a uh, do you have a favorite goalie like a current goalie? Um, I don't even know if I have a favorite current goalie. Do you have a Flurry? Duh. Oh yeah, Flurry. I love, I love my I love Flower. Flower is a lot of fun. He's a good human being. I, yeah, I like people. yeah. I love guys who are good are good dudes off the ice too. And Flower is you know an A plus human being. Yeah. Um, I like Darcy Kemper in Arizona. He's a, he's been a he's been a, a favorite of mine. I like Corpusallo in uh, Columbus. He's fun to watch. And then um, who doesn't like Carey Price? I mean, I right. think he's past his prime, yeah. but mm-hmm. he's, you know, when he's on, he's on. But I, yeah, I'm a big Corpusallo guy. I like Corpus, uh, Corpusallo. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Linus Olmark here in Buffalo. I think he's good. But um, one of my favorites that I like to watch right now, um, who's not in the NHL, would be uh, Eric Portillo, like I mentioned earlier in Michigan. I think the kid's going to be an absolute stud three years from now. Um, And I think he's going to be the next franchise goalie of the Buffalo Sabres for sure. Well, you heard it here first folks. And that's, is he of the Portillo family of Chicago of the, of the sausage and the, and the meat? He is of the Portillo family of Sweden. Okay. So different then. Yes. He's from Sweden. (laughs) Darn it. (laughs) Unless that sausage came from Sweden. then. No, no. No, I think those are only meatballs. (laughs) Yeah. Oh man. Well, what's it gonna take to like have happy Sabres fans? Like you guys have lived in some really dark. I feel like we're in the dark times of like waiting for winter to come in Game of Thrones, and like now winter's here, and you guys are just like. Or like thirty days of night, and like vampires are just everywhere, like waiting to feed on your soul. Yeah. So, like, what's it going to take to make you guys happier, Sabres fans? But give us a competitive hockey team. Um, you know, just something to look forward to. You know, so we're not always miserable. So, so competitive, like compete for a playoff spot. It doesn't have to be a playoff team, but compete for a playoff spot. That's where you can start the most. And then everything else, they always say winning solves everything. So, you know, it, it, it masks all the off ice issues that I brought up earlier. And it's true. It does, but you know, it doesn't mean you don't have to address it. Um, you know, little things like maybe a new goal song would go a long way. You know, what is the goal song? <laughs> Let me clear my throat. Seriously. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's been, it's terrible. Why? If you could pick a goal song for the team, what would you pick? It would be the old '90s goal horn. Um, uh, woohoo! Ba-na-na. Oh yeah, that was my favorite, man. That was awesome, and uh, that's what I would go back to. But I'm, I, I just love living in the nostalgia. I uh... let me clear my throat. Sorry, I'm like stuck on that. That's horrible. <laughs> that's a horrible goal I know, song. I know. <laughs> uh, Who made that decision? 
we need to get that person on your podcast and have them have you ream them out. For I don't that. think anybody from that organization wants to speak to me because I <laughs> because again, like you know, after what happened, like a movement started and a lot yeah. of change, a lot of. But well, maybe they happened. should speak with you because you're like speaking for the masses, and it would probably do them good. I don't know if I, I would say I speak for the masses, but I would say that I have the same opinion as everybody else or for the most part. Maybe my voice is just a little bit louder now, um, but I just don't put myself above any other Sabres fan. Tell everybody where they can listen to you talk more Sabres and hockey in general. Shout out your pods and where everybody can follow you. And then we'll hit you with our final three questions. All right. Uh, you can find me at Duanes39. That's D-U-A-N-E-S 39 on Twitter and Instagram. Um, same thing with uh, the show at the number two goalies, number one, Mike, uh, M-I-C, at two goalies, one, Mike on Twitter and Instagram. And, you know, I'm always responsive to DMs. Don't be afraid to ask a question or if you just want to talk hockey, I'm always open to it. And, um, you know, I just, again, just give us a follow. Follow us on Apple, Spotify, uh, you know, Google Podcasts, Podbean, all of them. We're on all of them. We're out there. So, and our YouTube channel at Two Goalies, One Mike, or my personal channel, uh, Dwayne Steinow. All right. Doesn't matter who you are, you're going to answer these uh, final three questions for for us so we're gonna force it out of you <laughs> all right so who is your favorite hockey hunk hockey what hunk hockey hunk like yeah I, like do i find the most attractive hockey player yeah who's yeah, a hunky attractive guy or who do you think's like the best player that you but think then, is just like dang you're good dang you're good at like just sure. looking, looking good or like good yeah on- both. both good looking plays good Maybe smells good. I don't know. I don't know how they smell, but, um, <laughs> you know, damn, that's a tough one. This is a good looking hockey player. All of them, but like pick your yeah, favorite. I mean, yeah, of course you'd say that. I mean, I gotta be specific here. I gotta find a real, <laughs> a real man rocket. Uh, and Connor McDavid looks is a good looking dude. I'll give him that. Like the guy's got some nice hair to him, but uh, I, I look, I look, I look for flow. Who's got a good set of hair? Who's got a good set of lettuce? Connor McDavid's growing into his face. He is. I got to say. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have that patchy, patchy beard that Crosby always had uh, when he was a kid. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) He's aging well. He is. Yeah. I I don't know who the best. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, I'll have to come back to one. But my favorite player to watch, I mean, I love watching Jack Eichel when he's healthy. He's just a, f- a fun hockey player to watch. But um, who doesn't love watching Connor McDavid, too, on top of that? The guy's just so dynamic, and he's so explosive. Just a really, really fun hockey really fun hockey player to watch. So I, I'll definitely Agreed. say it would have to be if – I'm, if I'm going outside my own, uh, my own market, it would be McDavid for sure. Agreed. He's a, he's a good one. And who's your favorite hockey lady? Hockey lady, hockey female yeah, hockey yeah. player. Um, or maybe a staff member or a wife or girlfriend. Broadcaster. Could be anybody. Yeah. I'm guessing it's not Kim Pagula. No, it's definitely not Kim Pagula. <laughs> and her, and her don't talk. Um, I mean, broadcaster. What about your favorite goalie you were talking about beforehand? Oh, Carly, Kelsey, and Katie. Yeah, those those, those three. I'll I'll give it to those three. The three the three Buttes goalies for sure. Um, you know, if I'm talking about like most attractive, um, I, I'll go old school. Hillary Knight. She's still a rocket. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, we're big she's fans of her. Yeah, Hillary her abs Knight. especially. Big, she's an, she's a good ambassador for the game yeah. too. So, oh yeah, Definitely. and. Definitely. Do you have a Sidney Crosby story, aside from the beard comment? <laughs> Sidney Crosby story. No, I don't. No Sidney Crosby. Do you guys have Sidney Crosby stories? I do. Oh, let's hear it. Oh, okay. I. I you go- can't tell me you have a Sidney Crosby story and then not tell me it. I mean. <laughs> I got to interview him at the 2019 um, NHL Awards on the red carpet. Really? And, yeah, he was so nice and pleasant and he was shorter than i expected he's not very tall he's not a tall guy 
No, not a tall guy. And uh, thick, he's thick. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I yeah. mean, 100%. yeah, for sure. But uh, he was totally Sydney. And I was just asking him, like, do you have any good fan stories? Like, I was coming at it from a little bit of a different angle as opposed to just like, how does it feel to be nominated? And again, and you're here again. for the 25th time. And you've already been asked this question. So he was nice. He was like, yeah, you know, I've had some weird things. The fans are great, though. I'm like, has anybody ever, like, tried to high-five you in the in the bathroom? Or, like, you know, and he was like, um, like, yeah, that's kind of weird, yeah. Like, he was very Sydney and was trying to give me an answer, but you know. he answered everybody's questions, um, was super kind, uh, oh. just, that's it. But hockey hunk, I'll go back to it. Hendrick Lundquist. <sighs> Best looking guy in hockey. For Hank sure. Lundquist, the king. Best looking guy in hockey, hands down. He is. I agree. I agree. Well, thanks. We're we're done. That's that's the yeah. that's, that's the show. Usually we just say thanks. I wish we I'll, I'll had sign, it. I'll sign you guys. How about this? Uh, well, guys, thanks for having me on the House of Hockey. Here's to you, Ray Ray and Breezy. Is it Breezy B? Yep. Breezy there you B. Go. Easy breezy, easy be breezy be, uh, and Ray Ray, thanks for having me on. I really do appreciate it, and uh, hope to have you girls on my show sometime. Or you have me on as a return guest. I'll never say no. It's been an absolute pleasure, ladies. Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media. Just look for House of Hockey podcast. We'll be back next week.